let's see. So this is the follow-up on the Mitsubishi video. And then I'll pause it. Oxygen sensor. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Ready? Yep. Stop. <laughs> so that I said, you know, I want to tell a funny joke and then I don't. I'm like, I got to try to add it in like all nonchalant. You know? oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they start laughing. <laughs> they start laughing. So, <laughs> let's see. Hey there, viewers. Welcome back. Uh, Ivan came back to join me. We're going to do a follow up video on the Mitsubishi. We've got it all fixed and we're going to show you what we found. So, hopefully, most of you remember uh, the first video that we did. What I'll do is I'll put a link in the description below and I'll also put it on the uh, little information button there that's floating around. Uh, but if you remember right, this one had some really wonky O2 sensors that we're not reading. Yep. Uh, we proved in the video that they were missing grounds. We supplied them with grounds. They everything yep, was, they switched on. Yep, everything was perfect. Mm -hmm. And we also saw that once the action sensors were working, that the catalytic converter had issues. Yeah, it had, <laughs> More it had or less. seen its fair share of abuse and gave up the ghost. So, uh, so we got it all fixed, and uh, we're just going to go ahead and show you and uh, tell you what we did. All right. All right. So after our original diagnosis, uh, you know, part one. Uh, our call was a bad PCM since uh, the oxygen sensors were not receiving ground, you know, yep. internally, and uh, you know we left it at that. But and then we, and we proved that we proved it. Yeah, yeah, there was no ground at the PCM. That was you know that was conclusive proof. We yep. test light. Uh, but just thinking about the whole situation, otherwise you know the car ran fine, and yep. we supplied the oxygen sensors with grounds and. It ran beautifully, right? There's no other issues, no, uh, like the PCM was totally doing what it should. Correct. And in reference to all, all the other sensors. Yeah, yeah. There's no crazy data, so calling a PCM in that case seems really kind of jumping to conclusions almost. So, you know, Eric and I, we uh, had a little teleconference. Just throwing some ideas back and forth, like what else could it be? If, it, if it's not the computer, what other variables are we uh, overlooking here? And uh, I guess we'll just go through the variables, like uh, how we did it on the phone, and sure. we'll uh, show you where, where we actually got. And, and I think it's valuable to mention, too, that if you remember in the first video the, with, the, with the wiring diagrams, um, that I emailed Mitchell. Okay. Yeah, I emailed mm -hmm. Mitchell. You know, so we could get an actual factory wiring diagram. So, and after we were done with this, and you know, it was, it was the next day or something, I checked my email and, and I, I'd received that. Okay. And that's, you know, that was prior to our call, and you know, that's when I called you, and, uh -huh. and uh, you know, we started doing our discussing because uh -huh. we started to make some discoveries. <laughs> so, what, so did the diagram match the ones that we looked up on Mitchell and All Data and well, BBB Industries? For the 04 it did. The 04, the 04 okay. the wiring diagram that you know Mitchell had sent me that supposedly they photocopied it right out of the Mitsubishi book. So, so 2004 so, California yep. emissions, this exact VIN. Yeah, and that was the thing. There okay. was no what we were concerned about when we found initially that our wiring diagram, you know, we found a wire diagram, the pinouts and everything were right. Mm -hmm. And any, any of you in this field know, you know, you look up on Mitchell, you look up on all data, you know, the wire diagram, it doesn't yep. match your car. It's no big deal. You know, I mean, it's, you just, you move on. It's only a couple of wires. Yeah. 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 You move, oh, it's supposed to be red and black. And this one's red and blue. You know, the pinout's right. Yeah. It's functions right. Uh -huh. You move on with life. You get past it. You do your testing and yep. you know, you go home at night. Um, but all data, Mitchell, BBB, they were all giving us the same diagram. Same amongst wiring those three. Cars, yeah, yeah. Same everything. But this one diagram was seeming to, uh, uh, we had to look it up for like an 06. Yeah, to match this harness that was on this vehicle, we had yep. to go to an 06. Yeah, and so, all the pinouts and everything were so, right and everything worked. Some, something's up there. I mean, three sources, reputable sources, are saying yeah. one thing and it's yeah. not matching our vehicle. Yeah, and that's when we thought, well, maybe it's California or maybe because it's Canadian or, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh -huh. So you just disregard it. Yeah. But yeah. that's that's kind of where we yeah, that's, <laughs> started looking. Exactly. So maybe at this point we can go to the whiteboard of knowledge and the Varus here and uh, actually show sure. them uh, right, what, what we found. We, what we found. <laughs> yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. So we're having a teleconference, right? And basically just brainstorming what we could have missed. If it's not the computer, what else it could be? Now, one uh, other resource that a lot of people actually forget about, you know, we have Mitchell, All Data, 
wiring diagrams basically. What about the component test meter in the Varus? There's a very valuable uh, feature in here that um, actually shows the pinout of the, the PCM. So I'm like, why not just look up the pinout for this you know, Mitsubishi? So, you know, pretty quick and easy. Go to our vehicle history, activate, <coughs> component tests, T4, all right, fuel injection, and uh, ECM. All right, there you go, module location pinouts. Let's look at the pinouts and see if the actual pinouts on the component test meter match up with our diagram. You know, just, just to have another source. The more sources you have in this case, the, uh, the more confident you are that, you know, you're on the right path. So, you know, just looking through. Tip that as we can see it, there we go. Uh, and we're fo we want to focus on our oxygen sensor grounds. You know, the, the four pins that we found that did not have a ground. On the O4, where do those wires go? Right, do you remember where they were? They'd be... B21, like 79, 80. Oh, well, I mean, we'll see here. Yeah, I was going to say. There's, yeah. there's connector B21, okay. And the two pins on here, uh, right here, 70... Nine and yep. eighty. Yep. Yeah, those were our O2 sensor grounds. Yep. yep. Exactly. Now, what do we see here? This is very, very interesting. For if you want to zoom in, for two thousand four through two thousand five, pins seventy nine and eighty are specifically labeled not used. And then for two thousand six, those two pins are. Sure enough, O2 bank 2 sensor 1 ground and O2 bank 1 sensor 1 ground. O6 only. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, this is like very explicit what our pins are pin out is supposed to be and our harness doesn't match. I think we're starting to, you know, almost get a, get a sense that we're, uh, it might not be a wrong computer. It might be something that's connected to the computer. Right. You know, and then when we, of course, this conversation went on a lot, a lot longer because yeah. I, I don't know. I guess, I guess my two senses is first of all, how, why, and you know, is it plausible, and why out of all of the wires on the whole harness, you know, hundred plus wires. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're telling me the only hundred fifty three wires. Yeah, they only switched four wires. You know, I mean, what, what are the odds of? Okay, I'm going to take this harness off of, you know, whatever year, I'm going to plug it into my 04 and mm -hmm. everything's going to work except for one little component. That is pretty, pretty odd to me. And the fact that, you know, all the connectors would be the same, you know, how, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. You know, right. how, how can it plug into the ECM, plug into all the sensors, everything, everything works yeah. except these four wires. It's kind of bizarre. But yeah. what do we know at this point? Our pinouts match 2006 model year. Correct. All of our wiring diagrams are showing that we have a 2006 year harness. Yeah, potentially a 2006 right? harness, yeah. So With all the information that we have at our disposal. Yeah, and it's definitely a 2004 model year car. We verified yeah. that. Brand VIN, multiple yeah. times, different sources. <laughs> and uh, we even went as far as looking up the part number on the computer, you know, on all yep. data. Make sure the it's factory a, part number. California, it's an 04. Yep. Um, got the serial number off the block to see if we could yeah. you know, see, see what we could see. You saw know, that PCM has never been on bolted, right? It was rusted oh, so yeah, to, the, to the there. frame. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the computer seems to match the car, yeah. but the harness is two years newer. Correct. So what are the possibilities there? Slim, but if you remember the history on it, they bought it with the money light on. Yeah. When they bought the car a year ago, the money light was on, uh -huh. and they, they drove it, and they never did anything with it until the day it was due for inspection, and then... So they know, don't know the history. Yes, yeah, they have no history. idea of history, they couldn't contact the original owner, that's all they know. They bought it, money light's on, the guy they uh -huh. bought it from says, you need an oxygen sensor. Okay, thanks, here's your, you know, okay. $3,000. That was the history, in a nutshell. Right, <laughs> right. So yeah. what could have been done before? Just a harness replacement? Like, why would well, someone just replace a harness? <laughs> that, that's what I thought too. So, any of you that have changed engines know that you, nine out of ten times, take the harness, you unhook everything, mm -hmm. you pull the motor off the train, you throw it in the garbage, put a new one in. What about in this case? But <laughs> yeah. if you've ever done any, like the older Fords, like the old 5.0s and 5.8s and all those, 
they had bulkhead connectors. You well, unplug Subarus. Oh yeah, Subarus. Yeah, that's right. You got them three big bulkhead mm -hmm. connectors. You unplug bulkhead connector. I'm probably thinking nothing of a lot of other models, but it's not too often you can take the harness with the engine. Exactly. So I looked at this. I'm like, could it have had an engine swap? You know, yeah. before they bought it and had the engine on or had the harness on a junkyard engine. Exactly. Yeah, so so started, did yeah. you see any signs of obvious signs of missing bolts or Yeah, you can usually tell if somebody's yeah. putting an engine in because uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know just because. So I follow the harness around, I'm like, well this goes to the PCM, it goes to the battery cable and this little in this little relay box. Yep. It could easily be undone and pulled out with the engine. Okay. You know, alternator, everything. Set the power so seal. The easiest way to do it is yeah, unplug the bulkhead. I mean, well, I mean, you know, it's kind of a draw, you know. Okay. So, okay. You know, sure. how, how are you going to do it? Um, mm -hmm. So we started talking on the phone. Oh, could this have been done? So I started looking. Well, you know, these hose clamps got spring type clamps. You see, like, where one wasn't put back. So at exactly. this point, you're a real detective looking, oh, for, yeah. looking for clues. <laughs> yeah. So I see that. I'm like, wow, well, could have had a thermostat. So don't want to get too excited. All right. All right. Um, I see go. some clips and harnesses where the other shop had shouldn't have been fiddling, I see they're broke. Uh -huh. um, what else do we see? The major clue. The major I, clue. Yeah, I guess I'll skip everything else. The major clue was the engine lift brackets, the two eyelets where you lift it, yeah. were both bent in towards can, the uh, golf cover. Can you zoom in on that one? Yeah, I'll, uh, well, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll show that here in just a second. But yeah. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, the engine lift eyelets were both bent. So it kind of clicked at that point. Yep, I'm This like, is not the original engine. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> you know, all the bell housing bolts were in it. Everything else looked fine, except for some yeah. mis missing components. And there was a few other pieces of tin that were bent, and I'm like, well, if you're trying to put that engine in, if that would have hit the, f I'm like, wait a minute, this thing had an engine put in it. Um, uh huh. With, so, with a, a wiring harness on it. So, 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 what's the, uh, what do we have here? A 2006 engine with the its own harness. With its own harness. Trying to talk to the 2004 original computer. computer. That had four wires different. And everything fits, all the connectors fit everything beautifully. Fit, everything fit perfect, yeah. yeah. Yeah, nothing was rigged up, so yeah. to speak. So the only four wires that yeah, are missing. The only four wires was... they changed from 2006 <laughs> to 2004 is your oxygen, oxygen sensor, sensor ground. ground. <laughs> so uh, just uh, what I did. So um, what, what was the correct fix for this one, Eric? It wasn't the computer, you know, what No, computer I changed load? out a couple of wires on it. So I got one of these babies. Probably a little cheaper for the, for the customer. Yep. Have you ever tried to find a used wiring harness? <laughs> so I uh, <laughs> called for Mitsubishi. And, yeah, for <laughs> Mitsubishi. So uh, what I did, there's this place in Ohio, I'll give them some props, Budget Auto Parts. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that was the name of the place, Budget Auto Parts out of Ohio, it's a salvage yard. Uh, they had listed on the internet a uh, 04 Mitsubishi with a blown engine. Called them up. Harness was still on it. Nobody got in there with the side cutters yet. So oh, yeah, that's what usually yeah. happens. <laughs> so I pleaded and begged with the guy, please send me your harness. He says, will do. He put it in a box, UPS that had it two days. Put it on and he did a fabulous job taking it apart. I'll tell you that. It wasn't typical junkyard style, you know, rip and tear. Uh -huh. uh, Special request. Yeah, and the guy was cool. He was really cool. He went out, he, <laughs> he looked at the oxygen sensor wires to make sure that they were the right color. Okay, um, you verified so, before you Yeah, and what, it was hard for him because the head on the car was gone, the manifold was gone. Wow, somebody the already, still you know, there. Yeah, somebody already scavenged off it. <laughs> and so I'm like, well, it's a great connector, you know, so it, he was cool. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, his mm -hmm. name was Homer. Homer was, Simpson? Yeah, Homer. <laughs> it may have been Simpson, but uh, so yeah, they sent it to me, put it on, works like a dream. Uh, mm -hmm. All four of our O2 sensor wires run into a single ground uh, Beam. Yeah, like the diagram yeah, showed like us. The diagram showed. They're all tied into the main sensor ground. Yep. So and uh -huh. uh, took it for a drive, and as we suspected, I got a code PO421 and a PO431. <laughs> yep. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, it did run a full drive cycle, except you know the yeah. catalyst because I didn't do a two trip. Uh -huh. uh, so set these pending codes. Yep. O2 sensors work like a champ. Fuel trims. Fuel trims run at zero. I mean. I How, uh, how'd you do an oil change after yes. uh, running crappy for a year? Yeah, I pulled, <laughs> uh, well, I pulled the stick on it before I took it for a shimmy and it was down a court, so I just drove it anyways. Yeah. But when I, when I drained the oil, man, this thing was like straight gas. I mean, it was like, it burned your eyes. I mean, it was like steaming out of the uh, oil, wow. oil tank. It was nasty. <laughs> That's uh, a good lesson then. But you had two cylinders that were running super, super lean. Yeah. And then you had two other cylinders that were just pouring. Flooded. Out. Yeah, just flooded. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, talking to the customer, they're like, oh yeah, this thing's always black smoked when she takes oh. it off in the morning. And <laughs> That's normal. Yeah, so it always smelled like gas. And so much for the clean air sensors, right? Yeah, yeah, right. So yeah, <laughs> the other shop is uh, still waiting uh, to get the uh, clean air sensors. They're gonna call yeah, this yeah. customer when they get them. A little so. more uh, swap tracks. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're uh, extremely, uh, I guess, very special for the 04 early build. Yeah, That's yeah. What, he, what he called it, the early build yeah, 04. We won't argue with them on that. Yeah, yeah, so as soon as he gets uh, these ultra clean air sensors, we're gonna put those in and it's gonna run yeah, all things gonna be like Sulev. oh yeah so <laughs> yeah. uh yeah that's how, that's how the Mitsubishi went down so if you guessed that congratulations you win uh <laughs> that was another weird and wonderful uh yeah. case study at Who would, South Miata right what I want to know is so you had an original engine you know obviously yeah. the car new came with an 04 okay. you're driving along bang you blow it up uh -huh. you get one you've got the ability to put it in you put it in the money lights on. It wasn't on before. Why would it drives? It, yeah, ship it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, why would? <laughs> I mean, you, what would most? Who would have done uh, that? Just, that just uh, obviously not anyone of any. Uh, I know, but that high just, caliber, right? If you got the ability to swap the engine, and, I don't know. That just kind of burns my bacon, man. I mean, just they just send it to auction. Oh, it has an auction sensor coat. Yeah, I guess. But sell it cheap. It just make some money. Yeah, and these people they bought it. Cheap. They told me what they paid for it. They bought it cheap. You know, well, now so, they're paying the rest of it. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not yeah. cheap anymore. But <laughs> <laughs> originally well, it was cheap, and the car's nice. The car runs great. It looks good. It's not yeah. rusty. It drives nice. It's got okay. brand new tires. I mean, it's, uh -huh. But you know, we also got a thousand dollar catalytic converter. It needs. <laughs> That's just because it's New York State. What? Well, oh yeah, yeah. We're yeah. forced to buy OEM carb certified, uh, and this is only available from the dealer. It's eleven hundred dollar item. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is what it is. I mean, if they want a sticker, then. Yeah, you know, you that's got, a shame. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, I mean, it is a shame. It sucks because you know you get this thing rock auto for three hundred dollars. You know, for and a man, you can't sell or you lose no. your inspection license. Oh yeah, right? yeah. They told us our our first fine for uh, being non compliant is five hundred dollars. The second fine is twenty six thousand. <laughs> like, that's quite a jump. <laughs> yeah, like, they must have some dice. Slap in the wrist yeah. and then yeah, they're like, here, let's roll the magic dice. You're like, I have five hundred the first time. And uh -huh. They add another dice and they roll it again. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, who makes this uh, stuff up? So. Makes the rules. I don't want any of the uh, little bunnies and puppies to die, so I'm going to keep installing carb certified converters. Mm -hmm. Saving the planet. Yeah. So, <laughs> I guess one last thing, we'll go back to the whiteboard of knowledge yep. here and just recap a couple small sure. lessons that we learned in this case. Yes, study. there was so, there was some valuable stuff to learn. Yeah. Which is which really awesome. Almost steered us in the wrong direction, you know, if we Correct. didn't uh, put our so. brains together and think about it some more. Yep. So, so let's, let's stick see. around, yep. learn something. All right. So, after any good case study, I think there should be a kind of a conclusion, recap, what did we learn? Because from any good experiment or case study, you want to learn something so you'll apply it to the next one and hopefully yep. uh, be a better diagnostician or you know solve the problems faster, right? Yep. So whiteboard of knowledge here. Uh, well, uh, I guess the main point that we learned, Eric and I learned from this case study, we'll share with you and uh, we'll see if you, uh, if you agree or you know, uh, with our theory here. <clears throat> so, big question. Should we use sensor grounds for testing a circuit? Right? So, in that, that what, what does that mean? Basically, you're at a sensor, right? Let's uh, use our map sensor here. You're already there. What are you going to do to test it? What do you do, Eric? What do you usually do? Uh, if I was going to test a map sensor independent of looking at it on a lab scope, I would. Well, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, I guess I would just do my three wire check, okay. or or I might uh, just go right from right from ground to signal to see if it's putting out. Okay, so you, your voltmeter would be here, right? You're measuring from signal yep, to ground to ground right there. Sure. And okay, cool. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Uh, so we would expect to see, you know, if we have a five volt reference here, our signal would be somewhere between five and zero volts. Correct. Right. Yep. So now let's let's go through a couple scenarios. What you would see in the voltmeter if uh, if we had a wi wiring problem, for example, right? Sure. So, so you know, scenario one. Say we uh, we're missing our five volt reference. What would you see in the voltmeter? Uh, right there. Well, you would see more than likely zero volts unless there's some kind of bias voltage coming down that signal wire. For All right. Reason I would assume. Okay, yep, I would say zero volts, and just so we're not all theory, we actually have a little experiment rigged up here. 
Eric had a little nav sensor lying in his junk file, so uh... It's actually off the old wiring harness on the Mitsubishi. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what? Why not we, don't we just prove this, uh, prove our thoughts with real live experiment? Real simple. We have our, I guess it's a Power Pro putting out some, a 5 volt reference. Yeah. Powering up our map sensor. And then our ground is going to be is just this uh, ground clip here. It's a cool one. And uh, our Varus is going to read to live, live voltage. Alright, so yep. is prove, this uh, prove that it does work here? Yep. So there it is with full manifold vacuum. So that's four, yep, four volts there. Dropping down to Point six one, seven. yeah, point six. I'm not shooting back up. So, all right. So we do have it working. Okay, cool. Uh, do we just want to put it on a big screen so it's more visible to the yeah, camera? Yeah, try, yeah. Try to put it up on. All right, a, real quick. Here. Maybe even just a digital. Yep. Go to our uh, digital multimeter. Volts DC. There you go. Beautiful. All right. So our map is hooked up. It's at atmospheric pressures shown three point eight volts. Scenario one, cut our 5 volt reference. There she is, zero volt. Alright, proof of concept, good. Yeah. So, you know, if we cut that wire, zero volts. So Alright, reconnect it. Let's cut our, our ground wire next. So, basically, what happens if we lose our sensor ground? What will our voltmeter show? Alright, so what do you expect, Eric, before we uh, <laughs> jump to conclusions here? Well, I, I think you might get a you might get a couple answers on this. Um, I know what the answer is, but I'm just trying to... <laughs> just think it yeah. through, like... Yeah, so... Um, Back to the basics, let's right? Let's see, so we got our five volts here. Yep. We're cutting... You see the ground, right? That's the ground right here. Yeah, so we're gonna... Yeah, you cut that wire here or internally, you know. Yeah, yeah, either way. Um, so you're gonna <laughs> cut your five volts. Uh, so our five volts goes in, and nothing's getting yeah. current. Exactly, yeah. okay, good. So, you, so, you would yeah. expect to see Five volts, but you know, maybe, you know, I guess some would think if you just jump the gun, just jump like, oh, I'm going to see zero. I got no ground. I've got no return path. I'm going to see zero volts. Okay. So, you know, I mean, you know, you might think that. Okay. So we have a couple of different. Yeah. Yeah. Things, might be a couple so. opinions you see or. Uh, so if you think about current flow, we say no current flow, no voltage drop, right? So you yeah. think you would see five volts here, and five volts here, and five, volts, and five volts everywhere. Five, five volts. All right. Well. Disconnect the ground wire. Okay, so we cut the ground wire. So now we got five volts in. We got our signal wire. We got no ground. All right. And just to prove our point, we'll uh, measure the. Uh, so that was our signal, right? Yeah, yeah that's correct. And if we measure our ground, yeah, maybe. there it is. There's the same five volts. Yeah. So that was good uh, train of thought. Yep. No current flow. Voltage is the same everywhere. So in this case, if you had a bad ground wire, right? Yeah. You're testing here. You don't have a good ground. So your voltmeter is just connected across the sensor, basically. Across the sensor ground, yep. Uh, you would see, well, what would you see? In, in this scenario here? <laughs> yeah, if we uh, cut well, the we sensor just, well, ground. We just showed you, you'd see five volts. Okay. Is that what you're saying? Uh, so what I'm saying is, <clears throat> so yeah, the potential difference between uh, here, here's here's where where we can get into trouble. Where are our leads connected on the voltmeter? In the, in this case right now. In this case, on <clears throat> on the sensor. Right? But are we connected on the sensor? See, our oh, negative oh, lead right. yeah, is connected right. to the negative of the battery. Battery. So actually, instead of here, we are connected to the battery. Jump across to ground. Right? Yeah. So, <clears throat> this is exactly what can get you confused. If you actually measure across the signal and the, the sensor ground, which is disconnected, you would see zero volts. And we'll show you just that in a second. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're reading five because we're actually measuring you know, from the five volt reference to battery ground. That makes sense. We get yep. five volts, right? So now let's reconnect our leads. So instead of uh, so let's reconnect it uh, between wait, whatever. So 
just across the map sensor, right? So it's going to be the black. This is our signal. Yeah, that's right. right. So let's go signal. And what do you expect to see? Uh, let's see how we're hooked up now. Zero volts. Because both of these are at five compared to battery ground, battery right? Ground, yeah. So the potential difference between those two should be zero. And we're hooking them up. Zero. Little shake test. We're connected. Yeah. Hmm. Because we goofed up. Yeah. Going off of the battery ground. So in this case, should we use sensor ground for testing? If you know you have a good sensor ground, sure, go ahead, use it. Mm -hmm. But if you're not sure that sensor ground is good, meaning it's connected to the battery ground, then you can get very misleading results. It's hmm. a really good right? experiment. I think that's the takeaway point here. And that's just for the map sensor. Sure. Uh, so I think we're beat that to death pretty much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, now, the oxygen sensor. Uh, I think it's a completely different animal, and just because of the sole reason, it's basically a battery. It's a one volt battery. It produces its own voltage. Yeah, it throws one other, uh, one whole other thing in the yeah. equation here. Yeah, so again, okay, voltmeter right here. On a good system, what would you expect to see? Uh, right there, engine running with no feedback from the PCM. Well, if you had feedback, you'd see an oscillating O2 sensor. Okay, so you know, your typical rich yeah. lean, yeah. Yeah. zero to one volt Correct. pattern, right? Yes. All right, what about this? How about we uh, cut that wire right there? What would you see now? Well, I know what the PCM's seeing, so I would probably expect... Well, what you see in the voltmeter? What you see in the voltmeter? I would expect to see a working action sensor. Basically, that's the bench test, right? We dis yeah. We unplug the sensor. Yeah, it may not be oscillating, but it will be working. Yeah, you'll see. You'll still see the functional, a functional sensor. That's correct. There'll you know, be somewhere it, between zero and one volt. It'll still give you a signal, even though these wires can be completely disconnected, right? You'll still see a normal, quote-unquote, working sensor. Absolutely. With the map, that wasn't the case. That's right. You cut one wire, that signal is you know jumping up either to five or zero, depending on where you have your ground. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Yep. So that is, I think, a huge variable, especially in this case, <laughs> where you know we obviously uh, being uh, yeah, the yeah, button button there. there. All right. You know. Our, we checked our wiring, we checked here, we connected our voltmeter at the sensor, right? Yeah, in, in the initial video, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it was working, we yeah, went yeah, lean worked. mixture, rich mixture, yeah, there's no feedback, but it, yeah, it worked. worked. Yeah. Next test we did, as any, I think anybody would usually do, like, all right, we have a signal here. PCM's not seeing it. Why don't we uh, measure the signal at the PCM? I got a lot of wire in between. So we're, you know, making sure this wire is good, that wire is good. Mm. What do we see there? Well, we saw exactly what we saw down there. Exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Sensor's good, wiring's good. Bam, bad PCM. Done, right? Done deal. Done deal. <laughs> and so, what, what's the variable here? In our case, that was the variable. That's right. <laughs> and that, I think that's pretty, uh, it's not obvious, it's not trivial. No, no, you it's, think no, of it's that. not. Yeah, well, I mean, now you do. Yeah, you know, now when, you when do. You, when you know the answer, it's hard. Exactly. Like, oh, I should yep. check that first. So, of course you should have. <laughs> so how should we have connected our voltmeter, in this case, to, to actually find this issue? You know, uh, this didn't work, you know, we're seeing a regular signal. Well, sure, you could have, you could have jumped right to battery ground. Sig okay. Signal to battery ground. All right. So say, and then from here we go to battery ground. What would we see in that case? In that case, we would see the same thing the PCM was seeing, which is a big fat zero. <laughs> Pretty much flat line lean. Yep. Flat line right? lean. Yep. And in that case. 
I mean, okay, looking back at it, maybe not, but initially you'd be like, oh, we have a bad oxygen sensor. I can't make it go rich. You know, oh, yeah. like putting propane in the intake. If yep. that's the only connection you did, you would say you have a yeah. bad O2 sensor. Yeah. But, you know, it would be my habit if I was going to do that to check both wires because you're going to check circuit integrity. You know, I would have, I wouldn't have naturally stuck my voltmeter on a battery. Battery gun. Um, okay. You know, if I'm going to the PCM, I personally am. I mean, it's just my personal preference. I would have hit both O2 sensor wires. They're right there. They're right there. Yep. You know, they're usually side by side. <clears throat> and you're checking the whole circuit. Yeah, you're checking the whole circuit. I think. I mean, I. I yeah. Having to do it again, I would have done it the same way. So I think in this case, you have to do both checks. Right. To pinpoint this problem. Simply because the O2 sensor has its own. Power yeah, power. because this is, you have to think of the O2 sensor as a battery. Yeah, completely independent. So you do the bench test, you know, with the voltmeter between the positive and negative of the sensor itself. Yeah. You see that the sensor is functional. Then you do the signal to battery ground. And then you see that your flatline lean. So the only conclusion in that case would be that your grounds are not connected because you got different results. In, in those two Yeah, and if you, if you had done a voltage drop test from here to here, you know, on a loaded circuit, then, you know, you would have seen that it was open to, but, you know, we checked with a test light. But then, yeah, okay, to test the ground, we can use a test yeah. light, load the circuit, we saw the, totally you know, the light. Yeah, but I, I guess the... Uh, Ver verify it. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, the, the big thing is here. And the, and the O2 sensor is unique in the sense that there's really nothing else like it besides, you know, like a wheel speed sensor, you know, there, there's not a lot of, you know, energy you know, generating yeah. sensors. Produce its own <laughs> yeah. voltage. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, so you just, you just don't see that. Um, so you just kind of get, I, I think you get sidetracked. We're just checking three volt sensor so, or three wire sensors. And, so I think we have to own up to this one. I think that yeah. threw us for a loop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. certainly did. Yep. I like to say we got slid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but next time this comes around, we'll know exactly where to put our leads and what the oh, yeah, are. Oh, right. yeah. I think I'm always going to be checking, like, you know, you know, I mean, like say you said, you know, like in the case of the three wire sensor, you know, we proved it. You know, that's, I don't think there's any way that can really trick you. You're going to see something's wrong. Yeah, no you're going to see something's wrong and then you can do whatever from there, you know. You're going to see either your five volt or, or, you know, I guess in that case your zero volt or your five volt, depending on where you have your ground wire exactly. hooked and your yep. test lead. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I mean, you're going to see something's wrong. Mm -hmm. In that case there, if you're doing an O2 yeah. sensor, I guess the, the moral of the story is you may not. Because this, even though we had the wrong wiring harness, this legitimately could break like this. You, the internal PCM ground could break. Possibly. Yeah, possibly. Possibly. You know, so, you know, this isn't a, mm -hmm. you know, fictitious failure. I mean, it, right. it's plausible. This could happen. Right. On an O2 so sensor wire. Maybe another possible fix for this vehicle would have been putting in a 2006 PCM. Right. With you know the yeah, grounds connected internal, yeah. internally. Yeah, if it didn't have any other issues, security and all that business, I, you know, right, which right. I don't know, but mm -hmm. that would have fixed it. Cut um, out four wires, put them to a ground, would have exactly. fixed it. Exactly, just twist but, it together and yeah. put it to the battery ground. That would have get a nice. We, we proved it, right? Yeah, yeah. you could That's get a nice uh, big yellow wire nut <laughs> like from your house and some yeah, tape. Home Depot and oh yeah, yeah, go to town. Uh, twist them together with some old speaker wire and uh, hook it to the battery. So basically, just when you thought you knew everything about voltage testing, you know, simple ground lead, pretty ground lead, there yeah. are variables. I mean, yeah, it certainly is. I guess when in doubt, I would say use battery ground, but you can use your sensor ground, but make sure it's make sure it's good. Yeah, and, uh, and particularly with O2 sensors, I guess that's yeah. the huge yep. uh, mix mm -hmm. up. And you think they're so simple? They are simple. They're four wires. You got a heater. I mean, you can have variables like yeah. you said a bias <laughs> voltage, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. What if what if there was a bias voltage here? What if this wasn't a ground? Oh, I grab that more. Yeah, like that. Say, uh, you know, what is it? Two and a half volts. Yeah, let's say that. Yeah, like some Chryslers. They got their two and a half volt and their three and a half volt. They got they got bias on the signal. And three point five. So, would it be two and a half and the signal rides over it? Or well, usually it's like two and a half, three and a half, and it rides in between. So it goes from two and a half two to and three, and half, and three and a half. So what I'm saying is, there's the bias line. And then the oxygen sensor adds its own zero to one, yeah. so you get two point five to three point five in the signal. Oh, okay, yeah. Right. Yeah. So that superposition, you know, you <laughs> add voltages basically. Yeah. yeah. All right. So what if you had a bias voltage on there? Could you still do your checks? What? Okay. So say you connected the voltmeter like this. What would you see? 
uh, right, well, you would see what the TCM's seeing. Um, you would have your oscillating oxygen sensor, assuming you're getting feedback somewhere between two and a half and three and a half. So you're saying this would go between 2.5 to 3.5? I would assume so if everything's hooked up and get feedback. Okay. okay, so you can check that by saying what's the difference between these two wires? Oh, okay. what is the well, the voltmeter? All it does is measure measure a difference. You can't yep. say this is ground. This is just hooked to whatever. Oh, it's just measuring differential. Okay. So yeah, if this is hooked to two and a half, that's going to read. You know, you, this is going to be a two and a half to three and a half. So the voltmeter is actually going to display your zero to one. Exactly. Yeah, your zero to one. Isn't that it, cool? it's, yeah, it's just measuring differential. That's right. Yeah. So if you measured it this way, you wouldn't even know you had a bias voltage. Yeah, that's right. I always forget. It's always I always got to remember it measures the difference. Difference. The it, difference from this wire to that. You can wire. go a long way just yeah. by yeah, I following think, that little. I roll. think it's easy to get uh, the you know the voltage, the numbers, everything stuck in your head yeah. instead of thinking, okay, when I'm doing a voltage drop test, it's not about voltage. It's about the difference from this point Absolutely. to that point. Yeah, so. because usually you assume you're connected to battery ground, so everything else is yeah. relative to that. But in this case. Yeah, you're measuring a difference. Right, right. Yeah. So, so mm -hmm. these numbers are redundant in this situation because you're just measuring the difference. All right, now, the, and now let's go back to our this you know signal wire to battery ground. Now, what would you see? Now, now you're going to see your your uh, uh, the PCM voltage. You know, your two and a half or your three and a half. Two point five yeah, to yeah. three point five. Because now you're seeing the difference of the bias voltage. Here yeah. to here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. It's easy to mm -hmm. get kind of side sidetracked on that. Yeah. So even with you know, don't be scared of your bias voltage. You can still do your checks. Just yeah. keep in mind that one of them you'll see, you know, it'll just be yeah, offset. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be offset. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. I was say. But I think I think we're uh, pretty much done with this uh, yeah. little recap. Yeah, we beat this one to death. So be careful on your O2 sensors. <laughs> yep. Uh, so so your your voltmeter leads, you know. Don't just go hooking them up and reading the screen. Yeah. Think about it a little bit. You know, it takes two yeah. seconds just to see. Okay, what's what do I expect? Well, you what know, I think, I, I think we what get into mean? we get into rogue repairs. I mean, I tested like a, oh yeah, you know, bazillion O2 sensors. You check. That's the way you usually check. Yep. Yeah, I mean, it's just you know, you know, you get something like this, and it's you know, kind of beats you up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, beats you up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's just the way it is. It's what keeps this job interesting. And then yeah, it makes you sharper. And next time you're actually gonna be. Like, well, I'm actually measuring yeah. the oh, potential difference yeah. here, and yep. this is what I think should happen. And when you see it, yeah. like that, you know, proves your yep. theory, and yeah, like like real scientists, right? I'm yeah, sure. Uh, I'm a scientist. <laughs> we're scientists now. Right? I should get paid. <laughs> get a little, uh, a little yeah. uh, certification tag, yeah, or I'm, what? Getting, I'm getting a lab coat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sweet. So there's the Mitsubishi. She's all put back together. You remember that wire harness was all wonky through here? Like I say, that uh, salvage yard gave us a real nice one. I was able to manage to save all the clips between this harness and the last harness. The only thing we're missing is the uh, capacitor here. Uh, it's got the bracket for it. It's got the screw. We're gonna have to get that extra. Don't show them that. Just tuck it in. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, everything. Uh, <laughs> everything fit perfect. Turned out fine. We're not uh, missing anything. <laughs> Beautiful. So yeah, I had to put a new. Uh, New battery terminal on it. That was uh, kind of uh, cattywampus, and got that fixed. And but uh, yeah, fit real good, and uh, definitely happy to find a salvage yard that would send us the uh, harness because that is not something you. And take then the uh, the customers were pretty. Oh yeah. About oh yeah. Their stats. Things been our, at, our findings and been at the other shop for three months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think everyone's happy at this point. Yeah. That's what counts. Well, I guess that's going to do it, viewers. Uh, it was a pretty interesting fix. I don't know if any of you guys guessed that we had the wrong harness, or maybe you were screaming at us because... Uh, I <laughs> engine swap, engine yeah, swap. <laughs> yeah, yeah or, or because we disregarded the colors. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you're new in this business or you're a new technician, you're going to probably find that uh, quite often you're going to see stuff that doesn't match, wearing colors. And, yep. So a couple lessons here. Be careful of your grounds, particularly when it comes to O2 sensors. Yeah. If your wiring colors are wrong, verify it with about 14 or 15 different sources. Exactly. That you can. Yeah. <laughs> so, That's a good one. Yeah, like um, you know, use as much as you can that you have at your disposal. It should have rang some more bells earlier on, but it didn't. 
because what are the odds of everything yeah, else working? Everything else work. Yeah, you know that never works. It never happened. Probably never work on another car. Uh -huh. So, uh, so I hope you enjoyed this series. I hope you learned a little something. I know I certainly did. Glad Ivan's along to uh, kind of keep me going and uh, refresh my memory on a lot of things. You know, we get into get into yeah. kind of a funk. You know, fixing cars and uh, you just kind of. Forget some stuff or take things. Well, for granted. I'm basically a rookie in this field, so yeah, yeah. I've never seen anything like this before, so I have yeah. to approach it as from scratch, yeah. right? Yeah, and that's that's what I value about you. It's like you have minimal experience. It takes me a little longer yeah. to you know go through the, the checks, but yeah, yeah, and that's great. And it, it gives me a sense of sometimes that's what we got to do. Sometimes you got to slow down to go fast. That's right. <laughs> Start from scratch. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and uh, trust your test equipment. Trust your uh -huh. Your your resources. Trust uh, your trust your head. Yeah, trust, trust your head. Yeah, yeah. If you have a known value, it's then go it's with the it. last resort right there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, you got to go with it. So mm -hmm. anyhow, so I just like to say, hope you enjoyed it. Check us out on Facebook. You can find me on Google Plus too if you want to connect with me socially. I will keep you updated with Ivan if he ever. Yep. Yep. Ever well, I'm just doing so many videos with Eric here. I barely have time for my yeah. own stuff. But. Yeah. So yeah, if he ever gets his website up and going or yep. gets his YouTube page, then I'll lose all my viewers and nobody will watch my channel. That's lovely. Collaboration. Uh, oh, yeah, you want to keep me on here. Yeah, right? yeah, I want to keep you on here. <laughs> I'll never tell you, ever. Uh, so uh -huh. anyhow, thanks for watching. Just remember, if we can do it, you can do it. All right, guys. See ya. Thanks for watching.